Now I will be the first to admit that because this plexiglass is here, you're not going to be able to see quite as clearly as if it wasn't. However, and the reason for that is because it gets dust collected on the bottom and on the top. Anyway, at least I'm not going to have little uh, chips when I'm doing the corners flying up and hitting the camera. And uh, you've noticed I've changed my mandrel here a little bit. And the reason that I had it the other way with just the single blank on there is because I think that the uh, shaft of this particular uh, mandrel is just about an inch too short because it is just barely in the collet here. And on this end, it's just barely off of the threads. So uh, anyway, that was my opinion. And that's why I found it ran just a little bit truer if I had this all the way in to here and I had the uh, shaft in to about here. Uh, that was just my opinion. I know it's still pretty good. It's a lot better than my old mandrel. But anyway, let's do this one now. Now, when you're 70 years old, you take advantage of all the visual aids you can get. Because the old peepers, they just ain't what they used to be. Now, I was noticing that I was getting very close to the mandrel again. And I didn't want a repeat of last month. So I switching to my half inch scraper here. I can actually do a much more accurate job on the ends with a half inch anyway. It's just that I had the one inch in my hand and I'm getting lazy. Didn't want to switch. Now very carefully I'm going to sand it down the rest of the way. Now I'm going to start out here with 220. I'm going to be very careful not to go right to the bushing with the 220. I'm just going to try and get rid of the high spots here. Like I don't know if you can see it, but right here it's higher than right here. And it shouldn't be. It should be the other way around. This one's pretty good. little lump right there i got to get rid of. Anyway, what can happen with this, even though it's 220, it will leave lines. And if I get too close to the bushing, then when I jump up to the 400, uh, the 400 isn't going to be able to get rid of those lines without going beyond the bushing, if you know what I mean. Anyway, here we go.
I've worked my way up to 600 here, get the excess dust off, and we'll just see how it looks. Silky smooth, that's for sure. Well, I'm going to try the CA glue finish on this. This is very soft wood, comparatively speaking, that is. You know, it's uh, not like spruce or something, but it's fairly soft. It's a lot like mahogany. Feels a lot like mahogany. Sounds like mahogany. Uh, kind of even looks a bit like mahogany. Okay, I'm turning at about 240 RPM here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on and then within about five seconds I'm going to wipe as much as I can off. And that way it's not going to be setting on there lumpy and I have to turn everything down again. So here we go. I'll give it a little spray. Well, maybe the first one I won't. The first one I'm going to let it soak in. Hey, look at it. It's reacting on the cloth there. Yeah, I think I'll let the first one soak in good. After all, the idea is not only to just make it shine, it's also to, you know, strengthen it. Because you remember I said this wood was really... Hey, look at that. Don't want to be breathing that in. A couple of minutes has passed now. Now it's not sticking anyway. Okay, let's give it another three or four applications and then we'll try and polish it. I don't know if using the curing agent on it Right now, when it's turning like that, is a good idea or not? I do notice it seems to be lightning on the end there. You can see a shine coming up on it. I'll do it a few more times. I turned my air cleaner on. It'll help circulate the air around here so it's not so concentrated right here where I'm standing. Okay, I'm going to do the other one now exactly the same way. You will notice now that that wood has considerably darkened. Now that's pretty much the way it would have looked if I'd have polished it too. Only difference is now it's got a nice hard coating. And some of it actually will be penetrating right into the softer part of the wood. Well, they've had about three or four applications of the cut and shine polish right now. And it didn't seem to have an adverse effect. You know, I thought there might be a chemical reaction with the CA glue, but there wasn't. Well, that's not too bad for the first set. Now about my Tormek sharpening stone. I sent off an email with an excerpt of episode number 12 that uh, described my problem with the stone. And Tormek Canada got right on it. In fact, within two hours or less I had a reply. And he said that he was going to forward the uh, link on to the manufacturer in Sweden, which apparently he did and uh, it looks like the head honcho actually saw it and uh, sent quite a lengthy email back with suggestions and uh, you know there's just way too much to get into here it's a video all in its own so watch for the video called the Tormek Sharpener <laughs>